Revelation 12, 7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. No place for them. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay? And some of you probably think, well, you know, those are the demons, and those are this, and these, those are that. Um, we're going to get into all that. We're going to find out where disembodied spirits come from, all of that. But right now, what I just told you in the last video, um, that is, I, it's a total mind blower. But what I just told you in the last video, that is how we got here. And what I'm going to show you real quick is what the everlasting chains, I'm going to run through this real quick so we can get this out there. Here's the earth. Okay, here is the earth. And Satan rules over this earth. And those everlasting chains of darkness, the everlasting chains of darkness is when, think of this, when you're chained. Let's just say you're in a prison and you're chained. Okay? If you're chained, that means you're bound. You're kind of stuck there. You're just stuck there, you know. Um, being chained to something, you're not going to be able to get away from it. So if this earth is where you were chained to, then that means you cannot leave this earth. That means you were put here and you are not able to leave. And I want you to look at mankind, us. As mankind, how are you going to leave this planet? You know, we know that when we die, we have judgment, and we are before the Lord, okay? That is your day in court. Think about it. Your day in court, okay, before the great judgment. And this earth, let me tell you, those everlasting chains of darkness, this is a dark world, is it not? It is under Satan is this world. Your everlasting chains of darkness is this world. That's it. These are your everlasting chains of darkness. And now I'm going to show you something else. Basically, the earth is a prison planet. And we are the exiles. We're going to find out that the flesh is your prison suit. And we await final judgment. Do you see this? Meantime, I've got the pre-Adamites. Whoops, i got the pre-Adamites streaming down the side of the page still because we haven't even gotten to that stuff yet. But right now, we are on the earth. This earth is prison. This is the holding tank, and we are the exiles. And we are here in the flesh because our flesh is our prison suit. And we await the final judgment. That is not what you've been taught in church. I'm telling you right now. But I am not the only person that knows this. I learned this from John Cleck. He's not the only person that knows this. Do you know that there are people out there that knew this? That there are people that did not want you to know this. You know why they don't want you to know this? They want you to think that you were put on this earth for you. For you. And guess what? They've given you every kind of entertainment. Have they not? They've everything. Everything from sports to theater to music. Think of all the idolatry that is in this world. Do you know that this world is a snare? It's a snare. Okay? And that in this world, under that judgment, remember I told you about the judgment the judgment that was pronounced judgment pronounced God loved us so much that when he gave us this judgment right here it was because of something we did 
This wasn't because of what Adam and Eve did. This is what we did. This was our sin before we entered the world. Okay? Our sin. We're not here because of what Adam and Eve did specifically. What they did allowed for us to manifest in this world. But it wasn't their sin in the Garden of Eden that we are in trouble for or were put here for. It is because of what we did in the heavenlies. You know, have you ever wondered why you were taught that this unfair God judged you because of something somebody else did? You know, Adam and Eve, they ate an apple in the Garden of Eden, and now God is going to strike the rest of humanity with a curse because of what two people did. No, no, that is not the God we serve. The God we serve put us under judgment because of what we did. That's how we ended up on this planet. And now, let me take that one step further. Not only did he cast us here for judgment and put us on a prison planet, but he made a way of salvation so that we could be reconciled back to the Father. Have you ever even thought of what that word means, reconciled? I bet nobody's ever broke that down for you. Reconciliation cannot happen unless you knew somebody before. If many years into my life I am reconciled to a relative, an old relative, that means that I have been brought back. Okay, we have been reconciled. I had to have known them in order to be reconciled. So have you ever wondered why you had to be reconciled back to the Father? This isn't all just about Adam and Eve, okay? Our reason for being here isn't just that, and I am going to get into what part that played into us being here. But we sinned first. We sinned up in the heavenlies before we ever got here. Okay, and that judgment was pronounced. I often wondered, and I was never satisfied with that answer. If I had a child, and we were going to eat dinner at a certain time, and I, why, first of all, why would I put a cookie jar on the counter? And then tell my kid, don't you dare get in that, don't you get into that cookie jar before dinner. And then my child goes ahead and does it, and now all of a sudden every child that's born from me from then on I'm just flat they're all going to get punished for what this one child did that is ridiculous and that is not what happened and that is not why you are here okay you are here because you <laughs> you rebelled okay you may not have wanted to rebel but you did you're here because of you okay now the next part that I want to bring up We're not going to get to Adam and Eve yet because I'm going to, we're going to go through the scriptures on that one. So follow me, bear with me right now. So we are on a prison planet. We are exiles. Our flesh is our prison suit. And we're going to find out when we get into the story of Adam, Adam and Eve of how that came to be. And we await the final judgment. And I know we all can agree. We are all awaiting judgment day, every single one of us. Okay, and now there's going to be a separation, and I believe that we are seeing that separation now, since we are in the end of the end times. We are seeing a separation of the wheat and the tares, okay? The wheat, those who repent and come to the truth in Jesus Christ, that's the wheat, okay? Those that have repented before the Lord, they have changed their ways and they have come to the knowledge of the truth. See, Jesus Christ came into this world to redeem us back to the Father. It was because of him that we were able to um, be able to have that happen, that he was able to bridge that gap between humanity and God. We weren't just cut off because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Trust me, we are here because of our own partially because of our own doing okay so anyway those who repent come to the truth in Jesus Christ they are the wheat they are the wheat okay those who remain in rebellion that never come to the knowledge of the truth but remain in rebellion they will not repent they hate God they don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ 
they are working wickedness in this world, those are the tares. Okay? Those are the unrepentant angels. Those are the ones that willingly, willingly fought on Lucifer's behalf. Is there any hope for them? Well, because of Jesus Christ, there is hope for all. You know, some of those people have repented. Okay? Some of those tares have repented. And yes, repentance is open to all. But guess what? Most will not. You know? Likewise, there are those people that believe they are the wheat. There are people that believe that they are the repentant ones in Jesus Christ. Because they raise their hand at some type of an event, they believe that they're saved. And they're living the same old life, doing the same old thing, involved in the same old sin, and they have not repented. Repenting doesn't just mean, you know, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm really sorry I sinned, and then go on with your life. Repentance means you do a 180. You do not go back to your old life. You don't go back to the sin you're involved in. That is true repentance. You go before the Father, and you, if you've got an addiction or you've got a problem, you go before the Lord and you say, Lord, take this from me. And you make that declaration, but you can do this before the Father. And we're going to get, oh my gosh, I'm going to get into all of that too. First, we're doing all the foundational work. But anyway, there are many that believe that they will see heaven and they will not. That's the sad part of the story. There are also the tares. They are willingly siding on the other side. They refuse to repent. Uh, there's people here, even on the um, YouTube channel, that refuse to repent. They troll. They just make fun. And they think they're doing a world of good for themselves. And I'm telling you, they're not saved. Okay? back to my chart so anyway now you have the tears and I believe that this line of tears came from the unrepentant um, the line of tears these are the unrepentant ones the unrepentant angels okay that fell you ever hear that man is in a fallen state where did we fall from think about that okay so anyway, what happens is, if they remain in rebellion until the end, they're going to be under the judgment of eternal damnation. There is no hope. It's done. Done, baby, done. Because they're going to go up before the final judgment, the final court judgment of the world, as will we. But guess what? Have you not read scriptures that said that we will judge the angels? I'm going to tell you something. The churches have taught you that, oh yeah, you know, man was made lower than the angels, but Satan was jealous of us. And that one day when we get to heaven, we're going to be judging the angels. That is a fairy tale. Okay? I'm going to explain what it's talking about. Those that come to the knowledge of the truth, every person on this planet was in one group or the other. And when we get before judgment, we are going to be the jurors. We are going to be the jurors over the tares. Get it? These are the angels that will not repent. We're the jury. And guess what? When Satan knocks out people that claim to be Christian, he's just killing off the jury. Just like it happens in this world, it happens It happens be, behind all the spiritual. So we are the jurors because Satan knows that we are going to be reconciled back to the Father in our original glorified state. Our original glorified state. And we are going to be back with the Father as we were in the beginning with no remembrance of this prison planet. It's done. It's done. We are not going to remember anything from this life. I'm also going to bring another thing forth. I've not heard anybody else say this, but this is, this is my understanding, too. Is that when the Bible tells you that, um, well, let's just go to the scripture. There is a scripture in Matthew... 
Matthew 22, 23 through 33. I'm going to read this real quick. The same day came to him the Sadducees, came to who? Jesus, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased. And having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third unto the seventh. Seven times, okay? This woman had been widowed seven, um, widowed seven times, okay? She married each of the brothers. You know, this one died, she married next. He died, married the next. Okay. And at last, of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? Okay. For they all had her. You know, who's she going to be married to when she gets up there to heaven? Which one's going to be her husband? Therefore, okay. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. You are, you're, you're making a mistake. He says, not knowing the scripture, the, nor the power of God, okay? You're making an error because you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. He is telling them, okay? He's telling this to the Sadducees, you know, they were sad, you see. Um, anyway, for in the resurrection, they never, neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Hello, when humanity, when we die and go to heaven, we're going to be the angels again. That is our first estate. Okay? But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. I'm going to tell you right now, when you get to heaven, you're not going to see grandma and grandpa and auntie and uncle and cousin and neighbor and friend. Mm -mm. When you see them, you are going to see them as you saw them before you came to this planet. You will know them as you knew them in heaven as your brothers and your sisters. We are all the children of God. You are not going to recognize them as, oh, that was my husband on earth. I'm going to give you an example. Think about it this way. Two unsaved people are married. They get a divorce. They both remarry and then they get saved. Okay? You're not going to be looking at your husband's ex-wife in, in heaven. She's going to be your sister. You're not going to have any memory of this life. When you get there, everything is going to be fresh. It's going to be new. It's going to be the way it was before you got here. And I'm going to show you one more thing. You know, and I, I know it's in Matthew. I'm just going to reiterate. I'm just going to uh, paraphrase this. But Jesus, he's talking to the people. And then one of the disciples comes in and says, Jesus, Jesus, your mother and your brothers are waiting for you outside. You know, and Jesus is in the middle. He's talking to the people and he's healing and he's doing things. And he says, he says, the, who are my mothers? Who are my brothers? And he, he shows the room of people. These people. That's who they are. It's these people. We have a commonality here. That's my brothers. These are my sisters. This is my mother. It's, it's them. We're all one. See, when you get to heaven, we're all one. We're all one family. We're not going to recognize each other as having been married to somebody or cousins with somebody. We're going to know each other. And even people we don't know right now, we are going to know them. We're going to remember them from before. All things are going to be restored back to the Father. Reconciled back to the Father, including us. Okay? 
And that was that point. Likewise, those who remain in rebellion, the tares, they're done. They're done. So are people who profess to be Christians that, that don't even care about God. They're not living their life for Him. They're living for the world. What world? This? The prison planet? You know, when we're brought into this world, we're taught that, oh, you know, this is what you do. You go to school. You go to college. You marry. Then you have a bunch of kids. And you make money. And then you put a retirement. And then you... You know, and it goes on and on and on. And you leave the inheritance. And then, oh, look at all the wonderful things in life, you know. I could keep taking these vacations and going to the tropics. And and, and I'm going to go to Vegas. And I get to gamble every weekend. And, oh, look at this. Look at this rock show. I'm going, I'm going to this concert. And you're all, this whole world is an illusion. Okay, and this is an illusion that is blinding you from the truth. This is to keep you distracted. Okay, and I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to tell you one more thing. Many of us, we know about the Illuminati. We know who's running this planet. We know what's going on. We're not that dumb. We have woken up to the truth. I know my awakening was in 2008. Many of us have just woken up. I feel that there are a few more that will wake up. Um, and there have been people that have been awake pretty much most of their lives, okay? So we know what's going on with politics, okay? We know Republican, Democrat, same thing, same difference, okay? We know that you cannot, we know, I'm going to coin a phrase that I heard from Steve Quayle. That's another good website to go to. I'm going to coin this phrase. He says, you cannot fix a spiritual problem with a political solution okay I want you to remember that you cannot fix a spiritual problem with a political solution okay all right this world belongs to the God of this world small g he is called the God of this world Okay, we are the fallen. We were put here on this planet, not for a good thing. We were never told to, to be fruitful and multiply. Okay, we were sent here because we did something wrong in the heavenlies. And we are on this planet being tempted by every type of wonderful thing there is. Anything that can feed the flesh, that is what this world is. Okay, and when we're born into this world, we think it's wonderful. We love the things that this world has to offer. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of cool stuff here, right? But it's a distraction. And like I was saying, you know, we know what's going on with the politics. We know that things are fixed. We know all this. But to get wrapped up in it to the point to where that's our focus, that isn't right either. It's another distraction. They're giving us enough truth to cause another distraction in our lives. Our focus needs to be on God. Not on this world. Not what this world has to offer. It has to be directly on God. That is that Jesus Christ is our Savior. This is where our focus is. We need to get to the point where the things of this world just sicken us, okay? We were never put here to enjoy it. We were never put here to ride around in private jets and just enjoy the life. That is a distraction of the enemy, okay? And that is a hard thing for people to understand. Is it a sin because you go to a baseball game? No, it is not. But if you're wearing raiders uniforms and this is your god you have idolatry in your life okay if that's taking the place of god you got some major idolatry going on if all you do is listen to music 24 7 and i got news for you even people that think your christian music is all that in a bag of chips let me tell you a lot of that is satan's music he did it. He wanted it that way. Don't you know? He led the worship in the heavens. You think he lost that skill because he's down here on earth? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's writing a lot of songs for the church. 
And that is going to be another thing for another day. Anyway, the point that I wanted to make is that this world, we were put here under judgment. We're not here because it's a wonderful place to be. You know, I'm not exactly saying that this is Dante's Inferno. We're in the first level of the seven levels of hell. But hey, you know, there might be a little truth to that. Anyway, in our next segment, we are then going to get into what happened in the Garden of Eden. And I'm telling you, you are going to be in for even more shock. So, with that, I am going to tell you to be blessed.